It was in the early 20th century that Japanese kimono starts to really have a radical influence on clothing styles in Europe. We see here this beautiful evening dress designed by Lucille. It's much more, it's cylindrical in form, a bit like a kimono. It wraps over the front like the kimono does and it has this kind of sash like an obi. Lucille was the designer name for Lady Duff Gordon, who also famously survived the sinking of the Titanic in 1912, wearing only a mauve kimono and a fur coat. What we see with the designers in the early 20th century is the abandonment of highly structured, tightly corseted garments in favour of uh, layers of fabric that drape from the shoulders. At the back here we have a kimono style coat uh, by Fortuny and here again a sort of evening coat by uh, Lanvin and you can see here they're effectively just shaped exactly like uh, kimono. The only difference really is the sloping shoulders uh, rather than the straight shoulders. Sleeves also, the long sleeves of the kimono, also very influential, which we see very particularly on this rather unusual garment which was designed by Emily Fleurger, um, who was part of the Viennese avant-garde, perhaps best uh, known for being the close friend and muse of Gustav Klimt. The impact of kimono in early 20th century Europe was part of a broader fascination uh, for East Asia, and it's seen in dress accessories and jewellery, particularly by the celebrated French firm Cartier, who've kindly lent us these are wonderful pieces. They created vanity cases made out of lacquer, and they even had a special commission in which they transformed a Japanese inro that would have been worn by a fashionable man in 18th century Japan into a vanity case uh, for a woman. Um, and inside it has a mirror, it has compartments for cigarettes and for powder, and in the tassel below, there's a lipstick. And here we look at what's happening in Japan in terms of kimono fashion in the early 20th century. In the late 19th century, many men in Japan had started to wear Western-style clothing to mark Japan out as a modern nation wishing to take its place on the world stage. Women, however, on the whole, continued to wear kimono, often seen to embody traditional Japanese cultural values. What we see in these garments is a real contrast to the late 19th century pieces we were looking at a minute ago. This one here has a quite popular motif of pines, trees against the shore, but suddenly all sense of, of, sort of delicacy has been lost. And suddenly you get this kind of real bright immediacy as almost the pattern seems to break out of the fabric surface. This woman is the epitome of 1930s chic. Walking down the stairs like a Hollywood starlet, she's wearing a, a beautiful sort of striped kimono, but she has her fox fur wrapped right around her shoulders, sort of modern hairstyle, um, a clutch bag, and her fingernails uh, match her lipstick. Textile manufacturers and, and kimono shops used celebrities to promote their wares. This is an actress here advertising Meissen, which is a particularly kind of long-lasting, quite durable, but still quite um, lustrous silk. Meissen was patterned invariably by using the chemical dyes and the paste through stencils onto the warps and all the wefts before weaving. And it created these wonderful bowls kind of patterns that you can see on many of the garments here. Now, for the first time, women could go into the new department stores and buy a boldly patterned, brightly coloured kimono um, off the peg. There was a sudden sort of abundance of kind of things available. And so we've, we've created this here in this wonderful mirrored room, showing all these incredibly uh, bright and varied kind of garments. Here you have a city life with a skyscraper and night lights. And above here, something completely abstract that just seems to suggest the kind of speed uh, of the modern world.